the human brain, and in particular the cerebral cortex, are what makes our species unique. Now, where does it come from? Well, one remarkable feature of human neurons is their prolonged development. They take years for some of them to develop to maturity, while it takes only a few weeks in the mouse, only a few months in non-human primates. The so-called neoteny is thought to be at the origin of many higher cognitive features in our species because it allows the young humans extended periods of plasticity and learning. It's been very hard or impossible to study human neurons in an in vivo context of development, and this is what triggered this study. Our xenon transplantation model relies on the usage of human cortical neuron generated from human in a cell. For transplantation, first we prepare the single cell suspension, and then we inject the cell into the neonatal mouse interventricle. Human cells migrate following the mouse radial fiber before integrating in all layers of the cortex. After integration, human neurons develop inside of the mouse cortex. Interestingly, human neurons show the slower maturation than mouse neurons following their own pace. We perform whole cell patch clamp recordings at different time points between 1 and 11 months post-transplantation. Over this extended period of time, we found that most intrinsic and extrinsic electrical properties of the human cells became progressively more mature. For instance, action potentials became faster, larger in amplitude, and their firing rate increased. To test the connectivity between the human cells and the host environment, we performed long-term potentiation experiments. We found that approximately two-thirds of the tested cells displayed robust plasticity profiles, indicating that the human cells are functionally integrated in the host tissue. So our colleagues in the Van der Hagen lab have human neurons growing in the cortex of mice, making connections with mouse neurons. And this means that we can study human neuron development in the living brain. But before we can do that, we needed to ascertain that the human neuron integrate mouse circuits in a meaningful way. Our questions was, how stable these connections are? And more importantly, do the neurons gain useful function? Our thought was, we can use modern cellular imaging tools to observe both their development and function in real time. To answer these questions, we studied the structural dynamics of human neurons after transplantation. We used in vivo two-photon microscopy to image dendritic spines of developing human neurons in the mouse brain. We found that the number of spines increased and their dynamics decreased over a period of many months, again demonstrating the juvenile nature of these neurons. Looking at the human neurons in the visual cortex, we could check whether the synaptic connectivity allowed them to respond to visual stimuli. Indeed, many of the transplanted neurons showed decorrelated functional activity patterns some of them even selectively responded to oriented bars on the screen. This shows that the transplanted human neurons can form functional connections with the host network and their responses resemble those of mouse neurons. Our human mouse camera model can be a powerful mean to study human diseases. We can now apply it to study a whole range of disorders that affect neuronal development. For example, we can use neurons with genetic mutations linked to autism spectrum disorder to understand what goes wrong during maturation and circuit formation. So the approach described here enables to recapitulate some key milestone of human neural development all the way to integration into neural circuits in vivo. Remarkably, the human neurons, despite the fact they are in an adult mouse brain, follow their own pace of long-term development. And that strongly suggests that there is an internal clock mechanism yet to be discovered that directs the pace of neuronal maturation. On the other hand, the fact that these juvenile neurons are able to integrate into the adult circuits has interesting and exciting implications for the prospect of brain repair therapy.